strong. Hi everyone, I hope you guys are all doing amazing. Welcome to Small Church Ministries. I personally want to welcome each and every one of you here who are tuning in for the first time. And of course, all you guys who are already a part of this church family. We typically start off our services with an exhortation on prayer. Prayer, while many of us may easily gloss over it and dismiss it, is actually essential in our spiritual walk with God. Not only is it very powerful and very effective, but it also forces us to rely and depend on God. Each one of us is actually called by God to be a prayer warrior. And in the Bible, there are actually many examples of these. From Hannah to Daniel to David to Job, these men and women prayed and allowed God for His hand to move. But by far the greatest prayer warrior we see in Scripture is actually Jesus Himself. He talked about prayer many times throughout the Gospels, and we see that He put it into action too by praying constantly throughout his life and his ministry. Mark 1 verse 35 tells us, Now in the morning, having risen in a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. As Christians, we sometimes take prayer for granted and maybe we put it off to the side and forget about it. Many times we only tend to pray when something is wrong or sometimes when we need something, that something is big or we need a miracle. On the contrary, Jesus actually made prayer a lifestyle. He prayed on many different occasions. Jesus prayed because He wanted to connect to His Father. As we go about our service today, let's learn from Jesus' example. Let's learn to connect with our Heavenly Father daily. Let's pray. Father God, we thank You so much that we have access to You all the time. Lord, I pray today that we will learn from Jesus' example. I will learn to pray to You daily and connect with You daily, not just something to check off of a list, but something that we want to do and we want to build a relationship with you. Lord, I pray for everybody in this service, Lord, that we will get something out of the service and that you be here with us today. Thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for us and continue to do for us and for dying on the cross for us. We thank you so much and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.
And you're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down No, Lord You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down For those of you who'd like to give and help this ministry grow, and for those of you who are already a part of small church ministries and would like to give your tithes and your offerings, simply scan this QR code that you see on the screen or go to our website. And now I'll pass you off to Pastor Jay for our time on the meditation and the Word of God. Take it away, Dad. Hi, everyone. This is the fourth part of our Biblical Leadership Series. Again, as we look in depth as to what a biblical leader is, we will travel back in time, the time of Moses. Our key verse is found in the book of Numbers. It's, it goes on to say, Moses said to the Lord, May the Lord, the God who gives breath to all living things, appoint someone over this community to go out and come in before them, one who will lead them out and bring them in, so the Lord's people will not be like sheep without a shepherd. I'd like to pray first. Lord, I pray that uh, people will begin to understand this in your spiritual light and that we will become the leaders that we were meant to be. In your name we pray. Amen. Moses is the most important Jewish prophet in the Bible. He's traditionally credited with writing the Torah the first five books of the Hebrew Bible or of the Bible years we are all familiar with today. And he was also credited with leading the Israelites out of Egypt and across the Red Sea. So today we look into the kind of leader Moses was. Not necessarily the characteristic of a leader, but more the weight and responsibility of a leader. So the title of the book, Numbers, I love this book, was derived from the Hebrew title Bemidvar, meaning in the desert. This book has traditionally been ascribed to Moses. What was supposedly a two-week journey to the Promised Land took the Israelites almost 40 years to achieve. Numbers presents an account of the 38-year period of Israel's wandering in the desert following the establishment of the covenant in Sinai. So in this passage, Moses prayed to the Lord and asked God to appoint someone over the community. Immediately in this passage, we have our first point. Our first point is a biblical leader is a leader that inquires of God. What differentiates many leaders from a biblical leader is that a biblical leader inquires of God or go to God for inquiry. How many times have we made decisions, big and small, without inquiring of God. I've done that. Whether it's buying something or going somewhere, 
Sometimes I just do it on my own. I make decisions on my own. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. But like, us, like I said, a biblical leader is one that inquires of God. Moses had the habit and the wisdom to talk to God, small things and big things. He looks up into the heavens to seek for advice and to seek direction. Lord, should I go? Should I not go? Is it the right timing? Should I do this? Should I not do this? So in this particular moment, which is very critical, when he was old and he was about to die, he acknowledged that God is the one who gave breath to every living thing. So this is my personal version. This is not the Bible. This is my version. He says, Moses was probably saying, God, I am old. And God, I am about to die. Honestly, God, I don't have the energy. I've been leading these people for almost four decades now. We've had many trying times. You know, there were times we didn't know what to eat and you gave us manna. Lord, and we didn't have water and the water came out of the rock. I'm, I'm kind of tired. So, so, so far you've protected, you've provided, and you were present in all our, you know, in all our trials. And I'm not about to make a mistake by appointing the wrong leader for these people that you love. So God, please appoint the right person. Please appoint the, someone over them. Moses understood the weight of leadership and how crucial and vital leaders are. So in the next verse, we see God responding to Moses. So the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua. Okay, I'm appointing Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit of leadership, and lay your hands on him. Have him stand before Eleazar, the priest, and the entire assembly, and commission him in their presence. Give him some of your authority, so the whole Israelite communi community will obey him. He is to stand before Eleazar the priest, who will obtain decisions for him by inquiring of the Urim before the Lord. At his command, he and the entire community of the Israelites will go out, and at his command, they will come in. How many of you know that when you inquire of God, he answers? Okay, maybe not the way he, you want him to answer, but he always answers our prayers. He answers our requests. God told Moses to take Joshua, son of Nun. He was no one's child. No, I'm just kidding. God said to take Joshua before the priest and the entire assembly and commission him. Here we saw that God answered Moses' request for a leader. But then again, we see here again the phrase, someone who will lead and command the Israelites to go out and lead them to come in. In another account of Moses, in the book of Deuteronomy, when Moses was getting old, we read, he said to them, I am 120 years old today. I'm no longer able to go out and come in. The Lord had said to me, you shall not go over this Jordan in Deuteronomy 31 verse 2. So Moses defined a biblical leader as someone who can lead the people out and come in. And when he was already unable to do that, he said, that is why that, that's the time for another person to lead. Somebody who can lead the people out and lead the people to come in. Here's another one in the account of King David. But all Israel and Judah loved David, for he went out and came in before them. Even the people of Israel and Judah recognized the leadership of David as king, as someone who went out and came in before them. Also, also speaking of yet the wisest person to walk the earth, King Solomon, he said this, give me now wisdom, he was asking for wisdom, and knowledge to go out and come in before these people. For who can govern these people of yours, which is so great? Solomon himself was asking for wisdom and knowledge to go in and out before the people so he, he can govern and lead them. But what does it really mean then, in all these passages that I just mentioned, to lead people to go out and to lead people to come in. 
Well, going out and coming in was used in a very literal meaning in the, in the Bible, as in you get out of a room, get out of the room or come into a room. But as the Bible uses it, we can learn and we can glean on this that there's a leadership context behind this meaning. When we study the words to go out and to come in, in the original Hebrew words, we will see what these words really mean. Okay, and again, biblical and historical context. The first word going out in Hebrew is the word yatsa, to go out for a purpose or a result, to go out in battle or to lead out, to produce or to go out to pursue or to deliver. Okay, this is a verse when it says, but David struck down 22,000 of them. He stationed some soldiers in the Aramean kingdom of Damascus. The people of Aram were brought under his rule. They gave him the gifts he required them to bring him. The Lord helped David win his battles everywhere he went. David went out to battle. He went out with a purpose. And the purpose was to win the war. He struck down 22,000 people. He led his army to go out. My second point, a biblical leader is a leader that leads people out for a mission and a purpose. Okay, so this is critical that we understand this. Now, the second word is to come in. So in Hebrew, it is the word bo, to come in, to enter into, to visit, or to be led, to abide. As in entering into God's presence or being God's presence, also to abide in God. In Exodus 18, it says, And Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God in this instance, Bo means to come in to inquire of God. Then Aaron shall come into the tent of meeting and shall take off the linen garments that he put on when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there. Here, Aaron came in into the tent of meeting, into God's presence, into the holy place. Which leads me to my next point. A biblical leader is a leader that leads people into God's presence. One very important role of a leader is one that will lead people to God, to God's presence. Many leaders go with a purpose, but what separates them from a biblical leader is they just don't have a personal purpose or a goal. They have the purposes of God in mind. Their mark is God's mark. Their goal is God's goal. Their purpose is God's purpose. That's why it's important to be in God's presence to hear his directives, his order, his advice. So now you can conclude that a biblical leader is a leader that can lead people out for a purpose, to battle, for a mission, into God's presence, which is actually devotion. In other words, my last point, a biblical leader is a leader that is a prophet, a king, and a priest. So to summarize, a true Biblical leader is a prophet who inquires of God, prays to God regularly. A leader that leads people out into a mission or for a purpose. And a leader that leads people into God's presence. So what does this mean to us in a practical way? Uh, you know, folks, it simply means that we should lead our families the way Moses, David, and the others led their families. How you should lead your family is you should be inquiring of God. Do you inquire of God? Is God part of your daily routine? Is God part of your lives? When you wake up, is God part of your plan? Do you still go to God? Does your children know that you're inquiring of God? Do the kids know, the people around you know that God is a priority in your life and that this is a regular daily thing that you do? Or is this someone we run to when we're in trouble? Or you just pray when, you know, panic praying. Is God part of your decision making on a day to day? Is God in the center of your work, of your relationships? What's stopping you from calling out and inquiring daily of God? Sometimes it's just your, sometimes we're just too comfortable, right? Like we don't need God. We have everything we need. Okay. So that's the first part. Are we leading people, yatsa, to accomplish their calling and their purpose? Are we accomplishing the purposes that God has for our lives? Are we living out the mission that God has for us? 
What's your purpose? What's your mission? Are you leading others, families, co-workers into bow, the presence of God? Are we the spiritual leaders of our homes? Are you leading our families into the presence of God? See, folks, this is what makes a true spiritual leader of God, a biblical leader. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that we as leaders are the prophet, the king, and the priest of our household, of our workplaces. Lord, teach us to be like David. Teach us to be like Moses, who inquire of God. David, who led missions for the purposes of God, Lord. Even King Solomon, who goes to God for every little thing because he understands that wisdom comes from you. So I pray even today that we will be the biblical leader, not just a leader, but the biblical leader that you intended all of us to be. In your name we pray. Amen. Folks, before you even become a biblical leader, I'm giving you this chance to have a leader on top of you, somebody who can lead you, someone who can you inquire of. If Jesus Christ, God, is not yet your leader, you can make him the spiritual leader of your life by simply praying this prayer with me. If that's you, just I'm going to lead you in a short prayer. Just follow me. Lord Jesus, you have never been my spiritual leader. You are not my biblical leader. You're not my shepherd. But today I make that decision to make you the leader, the Lord of my life. I pray, Lord, that you save me from all the problems that I have. I'm so sorry for all my sins. Please forgive them. And starting today, I make you my Savior and my Lord. I believe that you died for me on the cross. And you paid the penalty for all my sins. And today I want to move on to the next season of my life. All this we pray in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, well, today is your spiritual birthday. You just receive Jesus as your spiritual leader, as your biblical leader and Savior and Lord. And we're so happy that you did. And you just have to continue on. You see, the, the food of your physical body is physical food. But the food of your spirit is the Word of God. So join us every Sunday and listen to the message like this so that you can grow in your relationship with God. Amen. At this point, why don't you just bring out your bread and your juice? We do this every Sunday just to celebrate communion. We want to break bread with you and acknowledge how God good is. Let me pray. Lord, I thank you that you died for us on the cross, that your bread uh, is your body that was bruised, humiliated, torn, so that we can receive healing. That if anyone's sick, we can just go to him and says they, they will get healed. And lastly, the juice represents your blood. Your blood that was spilt, your blood that was shed on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. So that now one day we can have eternal life. Jesus, we thank you for your body and your blood. All this we pray in your name. You may now partake of the bread and the juice. Let's continue on in an act of worship. Before I spoke a word singing over me You have been so, so good to me Before I took a breath You breathed your life in me You have been so, so kind to me Serve it, still you give yourself 
Thanks, Dad, for that amazing message on biblical leadership. Let's all remember that God has called each and every one of us here to lead. Wherever you are today, God placed you in that place and this season for a reason. I hope that all of you have an amazing week ahead, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all again next week.